Hi online family, Maddie here. We're here at church getting ready for Sunday and I'm so excited that you're a part of this message. We're a church that loves God, loves people and loves life. And I'm praying that this message is gonna speak to you, it's gonna inspire you and uplift you in your journey in life. So why don't you go ahead and share it with someone in your world and let's be all a part of what God is doing together. Fantastic. Did you bring your Bible to church? Open with me to Mark 14. Mark 14, we're reading an amazing passage of Scripture that really has been speaking to me in a powerful way and I just want to share some things this morning from God's Word. Um, if you're new or visiting our church today, we're so glad that you're here. Thank you for, for checking us out and um, being a part of the service online as well. We're grateful for you and we're thankful that you're attending online. All right, Mark chapter 14, starting in verse 3. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, obviously Jesus they're talking about, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii, and given to the poor, and they scolded her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Could you imagine Jesus coming to your defense? Like you talk about like talk about a security guard. <laughs> he said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you. And whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed, in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. I want to preach a message today. This is the title. Love it if you could write it down. The Gift of Giving. The Gift of of giving from Mark 14. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your word. Father, we thank you that it opens up so much to us, Lord. And so, Father, we recognize its authority today. Lord, we're people of the book. We love your word, God. We thank you that it never returns void. We thank you that it nourishes our souls. Holy Spirit, use it to minister to our hearts. Change us today, Father. We're desperate for a word today. And God, I just ask that you would speak to every single person that's here today, that you would give them a word from heaven that would help their lives. In Jesus' name, And we all said, Amen. come to church to be equipped. Come to church to get a resource and get a word from God. Don't come to church to be entertained. Come to church to enter in. It's a big difference. The beauty of church is, yeah, we get to experience the goodness of God. And we get to experience His presence and the excellence of His house. But we come to church to enter into His presence and get something from God because He wants to give to His kids. Amen? That wasn't in my notes. That was for free. That's free today. The gift of giving. The gift of giving. Why is giving such a big part of this whole deal? I've been thinking about this myself. I've been spending some time with the Lord talking about it, thinking about it. We're coming up to our Miracle Offering Sunday and this is, this is sort of present in our church calendar. This is a time that we come together and we give and we sacrificially step out in faith. But I was thinking about giving a lot and I feel like the Lord's opened up some things to me. But giving is a big part of the God story. To give to God, to bring an offering to God is a crucial part of the Christian faith. It's a big part of our lives as believers. Giving today in Jesus' name is the same as sacrifice was in biblical times. I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm more comfortable with the app than having to bring an animal in here. And... You know what I'm saying? Are you glad of that as well? Can you imagine to be like, yeah, no, put the credit card away, bring me the goat. But it's the same thing. I'm just, I'm just using humor to, to illustrate a point. It's the same thing. Giving to Jesus um, now is the same as it was for God's people in biblical times. 
when we give our resource, our money, our time, our property, our possessions, it is an offering to God. When you give of your time, like Jill said, an amazing dream team people, when you give of your time, you're giving that as an offering to God. You're saying, God, I'm giving this to you. When you step out in faith and give financially and sacrificially, you're, you're giving that to God. When you, when you hand over something that you have to somebody else and say, that's for you and it's no longer yours and you give it in the name of God because God told you to do it, that's an offering but there's two ways that we can approach this in the scripture, okay? And I'm so glad that, that you're in church today because there's some foundational truths about this that you've got to know. And if you're a brand new believer in Jesus, I'm grateful you're in church today because you're going to hear some things that I believe are foundational stones of faith. Okay, these are the things that if you're young in the faith, man, if you can get this revelation today, praise God because it'll change your life. and It'll change the trajectory of your life. But there's two ways that we approach offerings in the Bible. The first is the, the point one today. Write this down. We bring the tithe. We bring the tithe, okay? We bring the tithe. We bring, we, we bring, we, we bring. Listen to me. Tithing is not giving. I know, it's so silent in the 832. Hey, by the way, I've, I used to work in the financial industry. God's given me a revelation of this. I have no problem talking about it, about, about talking about finances, okay? I could talk about it all day long. It doesn't bother me at all. Yeah. And if you're not there yet, that's okay. God will get you there. But there's something you have to know, okay? Because I want you to be biblically literate. I want you to understand the Scriptures, and I want you to understand this because this is important. But we bring the tithe. tithe is, to, to tithe is not to give. To tithe is to return to God what is His. Remember, we're people of the book. We love the Scriptures. We live by the Word, according to the Word. But we bring the tithe. We don't give the tithe. Tithing is returning to God what is His. Malachi 3 and verse 10, bring the full tithe. You notice it actually says the word bring. In our church, we don't take up an offering. We receive an offering because you bring it into the house. Okay, bring the full tithe into the storehouse, that represents a house of God, that there may be food in my house. So God wants His house fully resourced. So there's food there, there's resource there. And he says, and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. And then it goes on and talks about how God will Himself you talk about like an economic principle of security. God says himself, I will rebuke the devourer on your behalf for your name's sake. He says, I will, rebu I will keep the devil out of your financial world. Yeah. Sounds pretty good to me. But the tithe is 10%. That's what the tithe means. It means a tenth. But you've got to know that it's the first 10%. Okay, it's the first fruits of our increase, the Bible says. This represents Exodus 13 when, when God said to Moses, consecrate to, consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man of bee and of beast, is mine. And then he goes on to talk about the remembrance of the people of God being um, delivered from Egypt. But this is emphatic language. It's God made this so plain, it's impossible to mess up. It's impossible to get this confused. He says, it is mine. Whatever is first is mine. That's why it's so important you understand that it's the first 10%. The first of the, the tenth has, it's the first. So what's the first? It's whatever leaves your hand. That is the first, that's the consecrated part, that's the most important part, and this is why, because it takes first, it's, sorry, it takes faith to honor God with the first. Yeah. Amen. It takes faith, think about it. Think about it in an agricultural way, you see the increase, you see the harvest, it begins to come in, and God says, give the first of it to me. Why? Because it takes faith in God to believe that there's more coming after. And that He will supply. 
and that he will do more with the 90% because now it is no longer under the curse of this world. You, you make all your money from the world. It comes, it's all God's, but it comes from out there. This is what I love about tithing. It baptizes it in Jesus' name. It is no longer cursed. It is redeemed. It is good to go, people. And God will use it and he will multiply it and he will bless it and he will protect it. I want to take this a little further. Have you ever wondered why it's 10%? Like, I mean, I didn't grow up in church, so I'm, I'm asking these questions all the time. And I'm just like, what is with that? Like, God expressed in percentage terms, 10%. He, he, he showed me this. He says, because it's the same for everyone. Whether you have 500 head of cattle or you have 50. Whether you have 300 acres or you have three. Whether you make a million dollars or you make ten dollars, everyone gets the same test. Everyone gets the same opportunity. But I just need you to know, okay, as we're talking about this this morning, we bring the tithe. Number two, we give the gift. So we bring the tithe, but then we give the gift. Anything over and above that, which is the tithe, is a gift. It's, it's given. And, and this passage in Mark 14, we see this. We see the absolute perfect representation, including Jesus himself, of what it looks like to give sacrificially to God. True giving is free will in nature. You ever met someone and they give you something and then they're, a couple months later, they're like, hey, can I, can I get that back? You're like, you didn't, you didn't give that to me. You loaned it to me and now you want it back. You ever, you ever been with someone and they've, they've done something for you or they've given you something and then shortly thereafter, you sort of get that sense, that feeling like, what are you going to do for me? That's not giving. They just paid for something and they're waiting on it. True biblical giving, I just, I just want to teach you today. I, I want to help you today. It's free will. It's given and it's released. Listen to what it says. It says, and a woman came to Jesus. You notice that? She wasn't forced. She wasn't harassed. She wasn't coerced. She didn't have her arm put up her back saying, hey, you better get in there and you better take that oil in there. She came of her own free will. You know, you can come to our church for as long as you want. You never have to give a single thing. No, you will never, you will, no one will ever say you have to give anything in our church because being a Christian, it's all about free will. Free will giving, but here's the thing, you may give because you may get to be involved and see what God does in your life. But it says she came. She, she wasn't forced into it. She didn't, the disciples didn't, you know, bring her in there and sit her down. True biblical sacrificial giving is always free will in nature. Psalm 54 and verse 6, with a free will offering, I will sacrifice to you. I will give thanks to your name, O Lord, for it is good. She came to do, a, to do a great thing for God, to give sacrificially to Him. And then it says at the end of verse 3, it says she came, she, she had the, the, the ointment, and it says these words, look at it, she says, it, it says it was very costly. You know, it's giving when it costs you something. You know, it's true sacrificial giving to the Lord when it just costs you something. And you feel like, ah, oh, that's, you just feel it. But you feel the cost of it. And that's important to understand that that's actually, if you feel that cost, that's a good thing. It means you're on the right track. It costs you something. Something else about true sacrificial giving is it Break something in your life. Look at what it says. It says it was very costly and she broke the flask and poured it 
over his head. Something breaks when we give in a free will offering to God. Something breaks over us. Sometimes it's a spirit of religion. Sometimes it's a spirit that's holding us back. Sometimes it's maybe even just bondage in our life, something that's just tying us down, something that's just you know, causing us to, to draw back. When we give sacrificially and it costs us something, something breaks in our life. Something changes. And you begin to walk differently. Here's the other thing that's important to know. When she broke the glass, it, always, it, it also represents there was no turning back. You couldn't put it all back together and get the ointment back in the glass. It's the same with your sacrificial giving. Okay, I'm preaching right now. It's the same when you give sacrificially, it breaks. You cannot go back. You say, God, that's it. I'm walking somewhere new now. We're going to a different place. I want to encourage you when you give sacrificially, it's so good for you that you'll want to keep giving sacrificially because of how you feel in your spirit, man. Something breaks. Something breaks in the spirit realm. Something breaks in the supernatural. We don't know, always know what it is, but it's always connected to our life. It's always connected to our... It could be your kids. It could be your parents. It could be your friends. It could be the people you're trying to reach. It could be something that's going on in your life, but something breaks when we engage with what God is doing and we give sacrificially. Sacrificial giving, it's always free will, it's always costly. Here's something else, it always doesn't make sense. It always doesn't make sense. Look at what it says, it says, There were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was this ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. Look at it. And they scolded her. It doesn't make sense when you give sacrificially to the Lord. And there will be people, some people maybe close to you, that say, you're crazy. Oh, you're, you're given that amount? You're given that amount to that church you go to? You're, you're stepping into their building project with that kind of... Are you serious? I'm just warning you. It happened to her and Jesus was standing right there. Let's be people full of faith. Hey, run at me all you want, but given to Jesus, there's nothing better. So I'm going to step in to whatever he has for me. I'm going to choose no matter what to put God first and give what it costs and give the sacrificial because sometimes it doesn't make sense. You know, Jill and I, we've given over and over and over. We've been married for 17 years, praise God. But we give over and over and over again, year in, year out, and God never lets up. He never lets up in His blessing on our lives. He never lets up on the way He reveals things to us. He never lets up in our marriage, praise God. He never lets up in our whole family. We are just surrounded by Jesus all the time. And I pray it stays that way for the rest of our lives. But it doesn't make sense. And that's a good thing. If it doesn't make sense to you, lean into that. If it doesn't make sense to your mom who's calling you, asking why you're doing that, lean into it. Preach the gospel to them. Let them know. God's changed my life. Amen. So costly giving doesn't make sense. Costly sacrifice and giving, it always supplies a need. And I don't need to, I could never re-preach Pastor Tommy Bennett's message, but I, I think Barnett's message, I think he did a pretty good job. <laughs> of talking about the power of need and how God, if there's a need, if there's a heavenly need or there's an earthly need, there's a heavenly supply. God uses the, the sacrificial giving to supply sometimes the greatest of needs. Costly giving, it attracts, and, but here's the most important reason today. And we see it right here. Sacrificial giving always connects us to God and keeps us away from the devil. Keeps us away from the devil. There are two very present parties in this story. There was the woman. We don't know her name. And then there was the disciples. One of the disciples was Judas. What happened to him? He was probably the loudest of all the voices, talking about the waste, talking about the cost, talking about why. Why? Because he was overcome 
by the love of money. The devil had a grip on him. And when you give sacrificially to Jesus, it connects you to him and keeps you away from the enemy. (laughs) Keeps you closely tethered to God. Keeps you in right relationship with God. Keeps you in the will of God. What broke when this woman gave was the purposes of God, not the purposes of the devil. Not the, not the things of the kingdom of earth, but the things of the kingdom of God broke down over the people. So number one, we, we bring the tithe. Number two, we give the gift, but this is, this is it. Number three, we've we got to remember that Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. When this woman gave the gift, it ushered in the moment that Jesus would be crucified. It says right then, that she, he, he says, she has anointed me for burial. This woman's giving was so closely connected to the gospel, it's impossible to miss. Jesus even says it right at the end. He says, she has done what she could. Can I just encourage you, when, when you give sacrificially, you can only give what you have. You can only do what you can do. You can only give Wouldn't it be nice if you could give away someone else's money? (laughs) He said, she has done a beautiful thing to me. She has done what she could, verse 8. She has anointed my body before burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is preached, in the whole world, What she has done (laughs) will be told in memory of her. What did this woman know? She knew that this was Jesus, the Messiah, the King, the One. She knew the gospel. She knew. She knew that this, this moment was the moment, the beginning stages of the gospel going out. So in response to that, Jesus says, wherever this gospel is preached, this story is told, will be in memory of her. It means that she understood. It means that she had a revelation. Do you have a revelation that the gospel changes things? Do you have a revelation today that when you give to Jesus, He keeps giving because the gospel goes out? Because lives change. Because people encounter Him. Jesus is the gift that keeps on giving. And my prayer for us as a church is this spirit would break out over our church. This spirit would be like that flask that just breaks out everywhere. And this weekend and next weekend when we give, we would understand we're giving to Jesus and He's the gift that keeps on giving. And the gospel is the thing that cannot be just wherever it goes, it changes lives. Wherever it ends up, it always changes people. So can we take up that challenge today? Can we get inspired by this woman today? Can we believe Jesus? Believe that the gospel is going to change lives in our city, but especially When people come in here, they see people that are changed. They see people that are surrendered. They see people that say, you know what? I want to give everything I have because Jesus is just that good. Would you stand with me? I want us to sing again. Sing this song about giving to Jesus and giving what we have and looking to Him as the author, the finisher of our faith. Can I just encourage you? Just allow this moment to to minister to your heart. Just allow Jesus in this moment to speak to you, to connect all over again and remember who He is. Come on, let's sing. Well, I hope that message inspired and encouraged you. Well, before we finish, I would just love to ask you one question. The question is this. Have you ever said yes to Jesus? I'm not talking about knowing of Him. See, that's education. I'm talking about knowing Him personally. That's a relationship. Friend, I wonder if you've ever said yes to Jesus, opened up the doors of your heart, surrendered ownership of your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that if we believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord and we confess with our mouths that God raised Him from the dead, Romans says that we will be saved. I wonder if you've ever made that choice. I wonder if you've ever said yes to Him. I would love the honor and the privilege of leading you in a prayer right now, right where you're at, 
into a new life-giving relationship with Jesus Christ. It's as simple as praying this prayer. And if you're ready to make that choice, why don't you just pray this prayer right now with me? Say, Dear Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died for me. And thank you that you rose again so that I could have life. Forgive me of my sins, of all the things I've done wrong. I make a choice today to follow you, Jesus, to be a child of God for the rest of my days. Amen. Amen. We are so excited. If you pray that prayer, you're saved. We believe you're on your way to heaven. But what we'd love to do is give you a free gift from our church. It's a New Believers Bible. And if you pray that prayer, we would love for you to reach out to us at colonialchurch.life and we will send you this free gift of a new Bible to you. We are so excited as you take this first step in your new journey of faith. God bless you, church. And we'll see you next week.